Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 19th of May, 2011. On this date, exactly 50 years ago, the Venera 1 spacecraft became the first human-made object to visit another world, as it flew past the planet Venus. The exciting news today is that we've had some beautiful eruptions from the sun. More on that later. Let's take a look at the sunspot regions. We only have three numbered sunspot regions on the sun at the moment, and all of them are in the southern hemisphere. 1214 has shown some signs of decay, and region 1217 disappeared entirely overnight. Region 1216 remains a single large spot, and a new region has been numbered 1218, and that actually produced a sea flare yesterday. For the time, the sun seemed to develop a very strange looking sunspot. It turns out it's just the International Space Station orbiting past the sun. But it's a neat picture, isn't it? Let's take a quick look at the evolution of these sunspot regions, but as you'll see, there's nothing much going on. In the southwest, you can see the slow decay of region 1214 and the disappearance of 1217. Region 1216 remains stable, and it always amazes me how these large unipolar spots can remain coherent. Magnetic fields shouldn't seem to work that way. And if you look to the southeast limb, you can see the appearance of the new region 1218. Next, we'll take a look and see what flares have happened in the last 24 hours. For that, we go to the NOAA GOES satellite and look at the X-ray sensor. Here's the plot, and you can see we've had a couple of sea flares. The first one was from the new region 1218. The second one is a long duration event, and that was from region 1208. And you can clearly see it in the coronal movies, which I'll show you in a second. But also note that third flare. It's only a B3 event, but it's also a long duration flare. In my opinion, that has been incorrectly assigned to region 1208. I think it came from that spotless plage region that has given us three spotless flares already, for reasons that will become apparent when you see the movies. With all these long duration flares, one might expect filaments to be lifting off. So let's take a look at the Helium-304 Angstrom image and see whether there's been any major eruptions on the surface of the Sun. And there are three in this sequence. See if you can see where they are. Let's take a look at them in a little more detail. First we'll concentrate on the one in the northeast. Watch that high prominence near the middle of the screen and see how it develops over the next few hours. Isn't that absolutely spectacular? Next we'll take a look at the events on the west limb. The region right on the limb is region 1208, and the region to the left is that spotless plage I was talking about. First 1208 gives a spectacular flare, and you can see the post-flare loops forming high in the solar atmosphere. Right at the end, the spotless plage produces a two-ribbon flare. Now let's take a look at the same sequence, but in the coronal movie. First the full disc movie, and then in more detail as seen in the one million degree coronal movie. Now a question for you, are the million degree post flare loops seen here higher or lower than the ones in the Helium 304 movie? Post your thoughts on that in the comments box below. This is quite an important question as it relates to how CMEs occur and how these loops are formed. Finally, let's see if those filament eruptions cause a coronal mass ejection. For that, we turn to the Solar and Heliospheric Observatory's LASCO uh, coronagraphs. In the smaller C2 field of view, we can see that there are at least two major events off of the east limb. In the larger field of view, you just see the first of those events sticking up above the uh, occulting disk. The A spacecraft shows us what the impact of all these events have been on the Earth, which to date has not been much. That is not terribly surprising, because a coronal mass ejection generally takes two or three days to reach the Earth. In the meantime, the solar wind density has been varying between 0.3 and 3 protons per cubic centimetre, and its velocity has dropped to about 400 kilometres per second. NOAA 15 shows us that the auroral zone is relatively quiet, and the Kp index has been varying between 0 and 2. So in summary then, the sunspot number has dropped to 65, the X-ray background is B2, the radio sun flux remains just above 90 solar flux units. The solar wind speed has dropped to 410 km per second, with a density of about 1.3 protons per cubic centimetre. And the Kp index is rated as quiet. So my forecast is that it is possible that we will get sea flares, but the chances of getting an M or X flare are very low. I suspect the sunspot number will go lower with the loss of several regions. CMEs seem quite likely. And a geomagnetic storm is possible, but probably not for another couple of days at least. Looking at the composite coronal image from the stereo and SDO uh, missions, we can see that we have regions coming back in a couple of days' time. So tomorrow we should start seeing the first evidence of those regions from behind the east limb. If you would like more detail about this subject, check out some of the links I have in the description box below. 
You can go to my channel to see previous editions of The Sun Today. And I also have some interesting videos, at least in my opinion, on global warming that you might find uh, fun to watch. If you want to keep up to minute what's going on, there are some excellent NOAA and NASA sites also listed in the description box below. And also spaceweather.com is a useful site to, to check in into every now and then. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.